In the heart of Croatia, archaeologists unearthed a treasure that would redefine our understanding of Neanderthal culture, an intricately crafted necklace made from the talons of a white-tailed eagle. The story behind this extraordinary discovery takes us back thousands of years to a time when Neanderthals roamed the land. The year was 1899 when archaeologist Dragutin Gorjanovic stumbled upon the Krapina site, a rich trove of Neanderthal artifacts. However, it wasn't until over a century later that researchers took a closer look at a set of eagle talons found within the collection. The revelation was stunning. These were not just any talons, they were meticulously crafted in a way that suggested they once formed a necklace. Anthropologists and archaeologists embarked on a study to unravel the tale of the Krapina Neanderthals who wore this unique adornment and to accurately date the site. Using advanced dating techniques and meticulous analysis, they estimated that the necklace was crafted around 130,000 years ago, a time when Neanderthals dominated the wilderness of Europe. This eagle claw necklace offered a glimpse into the sophisticated symbolic behavior of Neanderthals. It challenged preconceived notions about their capabilities, suggesting that they possessed not only the cognitive ability for symbolic thought, but also the craftsmanship to create intricate jewellery. As researchers delved into the cultural significance of the necklace, they speculated on its possible meanings. Did it serve a functional purpose, such as a talisman for hunting success, or a badge of honour within the community? Or did it carry a deeper symbolic meaning perhaps representing the Neanderthal's connection with the natural world or his or her social status. Indeed, almost every aspect of Neanderthal behavior is still debated. Since their discovery over a century ago, Krapina's world-famous Neanderthals have had an important role in the paleoanthropological field. Because of their variability and diversity, the nearly 1,000 Neanderthal fossils have made invaluable contributions to our understanding of Neanderthal morphology and behavior. The archaeological context of these remains has recently received increased attention, as evidenced by detailed studies of Mousterian stone tools, as well as paleontology and zoo archaeology of animal remains. More than a century ago, the eight eagle talons were excavated from the famous Neanderthal site of Krapina and stored in a drawer at the Croatian Natural History Museum in Zagreb. The talons were dated to around 130,000 years ago, about 80,000 years before Homo sapiens arrived in the area. The talon necklace is now believed to be the earliest known symbolic Neanderthal artifact. While reviewing eight white-tailed eagle talons and an associated phalanx, anthropologist Dvorka Radovkik, curator at Croatia's Natural History Museum, noticed cut marks that indicated they were made by a human hand. Neanderthals hunted mammoths, bison, and other powerful animals for food, but their most formidable foes may have been the massive eagles they captured to make jewellery. The talons of white-tailed eagles discovered at the Neanderthal site in Croatia show cut marks and wear patterns that indicate the claws were worn as personal ornaments. The white-tailed eagle, also known as the sea eagle, is a large bird of prey found throughout temperate Eurasia. They're extremely powerful birds. Catching one of these things requires both bravery and foolishness. With wingspan of about two meters, seven feet, the birds are Europe's largest aerial predator, similar in appearance to but larger than the American bald eagle. The 130,000-year-old talons were discovered more than a century ago in a rock shelter in northern Croatia. Between 1899 and 1905, all have evidence of modification on the medial and lateral edges, such as cut marks, nicks, and polishing. They have no drilled holes, indicating that the talons were worn after being tied around their margins. The surface of the talons contained ochre and black pigments. Traces of animal fiber were also discovered, indicating that one or more of the talons were bound together in an assemblage. Archaeologists discovered 29 different bird species at the site, with the majority of them being eagles and owls. While examining the talons, they discovered that they were the only ones with changes made by a human hand. Only a few raptor talons and feathers, possibly used as jewellery, have been discovered at other Neanderthal sites, but the Krapina collection of eight talons from at least three different birds 
is the largest and oldest known. Some of the cut marks, which were most likely made when the talons were severed from the bird's legs, have been smoothed over, and many of the talons are burnished. Investigators believe this is clear evidence that Neanderthals manipulated the claws to use as jewellery, most likely a necklace. Some archaeologists believe that only Homo sapiens had minds capable of such symbolic behaviour, which was expressed in cave art, jewellery and other artefacts with no obvious practical application. Other researchers discovered eagle and vulture talons in Gibraltar Cave in Spain, where Neanderthals also lived which could be the last eagle talon necklace made by Neanderthals. Since the early Middle Paleolithic, Neanderthals have used eagle talons as symbolic elements, most likely as necklace pendants. The pieces made of bone remains from a Spanish imperial eagle that lived over 39,000 years ago. The remains correspond to the left leg of a large eagle, which had a wingspan of about five to six feet. The researchers concluded that the animal was killed for symbolic reasons rather than for consumption based on comparisons to remains from other prehistorical sites. These eagle talons are the oldest ornamental elements known in the world, predating any ornamentation associated with Homo sapiens. Importantly, each discovery of this kind brings the Neanderthals closer to us and demonstrates their advanced symbolic abilities. As mentioned, the dating of the site is controversial. Gorjanovic, a geologist, directed the excavation of the sandstone rock shelter from 1899 to 1905. Today, only the eroded sandstone cliff face remains from the site. Gorjanovic extensively documented the site in his publications and estimated it to be from the late Eemian interglacial period, 130,000 years ago, based on the fauna. Controversially, this age is estimated using cave bear size and morphology. According to the study, from the earliest to the most recent deposits, male cave bears are all small, significantly smaller than glacial sites in the region containing cave bear remains. A study from 1995 concludes that the strata at the site were deposited over a warm, short time period of approximately 10,000 years. The small size of Krapina male cave bears is best explained as an adaptation to a full interglacial climate. According to the study, electron spin resonance dates from rhino teeth placed the cave deposits at 130,000 years ago, which is within marine isotope substage 5e. Given that this climate transition occurred approximately 115,000 years ago, the existing dates from Krapina can be used to support both a short stratigraphy in which deposition occurred only during this period. Large mammals have shown dramatic changes in body size that correlate with global temperature changes. Especially striking is the decrease in body size across the Pleistocene-Holocene transition, with Eemian cave bears being on average slightly smaller than full-fledged cave bears from the last glaciation. As a result, scientists could use the size of Krapina cave bears to address the chronology issue. Because cave bears that lived during the full interglacial period should be smaller than those that lived under glacial conditions. Only Neanderthal bones and tools has been discovered at Krapina, which is confirmed by the presence of Mousterian tools and human remains. Gorjanovic and his assistant gathered hundreds of Neanderthal bones and teeth, over 800 stone tools, and nearly 2,800 animal remains. However, Given that this site dates from a warm period and early Homo sapiens have been discovered in the northern Levant region around this time, there is the possibility of an intrusion by early modern humans who were known to be wearing ornamentation at the time. Interestingly, during this time we find evidence of large-scale hunting of massive elephants in Germany, which is also unusual for Neanderthals, who are thought to have only lived and hunted in small, isolated groups. According to Gorjanovic, Neanderthals did not coexist peacefully with their neighbours. He wrote, As our diluvial man appeared to be a cannibal, judging by fragments of charred skull and extremities. It's difficult to imagine that early man from Krapina enjoying the spoils of his hunt in peace and solitude. He was undoubtedly attacked on his territory from time to time by neighbouring hordes with less abundant hunting grounds. Neanderthals fell on each side, 
and the victors dealt with the dead as they would with the spoils of a successful hunt, he speculated over one hundred years ago. Indeed, the remains of eleven Neanderthals showed signs of injuries that had healed over their lifetimes, which would not have been possible without the community's help. Injury types include skull fractures, blunt force trauma, broken ribs, broken wrists, broken clavicles, and others. The bones also showed signs of possible cannibalism or mortuary practices, but it's difficult to get into the minds of a long-extinct human species. For example, the Crapina III skull is thought to be that of an adult Neanderthal woman, based on the gracile appearance of the partial cranium. The skull is similar in morphology to the younger Taban skull from the Levant, which is also female. The incisions on the front of the Crapina III cranium differ from the other cut marks on the site. 35. Mostly parallel marks run up the front from right of the midline. However, the mark's characteristics do not correspond to scalping, cannibalism, defleshing, or other post-mortem activities described for Neanderthals or modern groups. These marks likely represent a type of funereal behavior that has yet to be documented in Neanderthals, implying ritualistic treatment of the dead, according to some investigators. Nevertheless, the stone artifacts and animal remains of Crapina are proving to be a rich and productive source of new information and insight into Neanderthal behavior, subsistence practices, social organization, and interactions with their surroundings. Everything at Crapina came from stratified excavations and has been housed in the Croatian Natural History Museum for over a century. Animal bones are primarily composed of large mammals, particularly rhinoceros, cave bears, and bison, with pigs, deer, and small carnivores accounting for a smaller proportion of the fauna. A complete list of mammalian fauna includes 25 species, of which 13.6% show evidence of burning and another 4.1% have stone tool-cut marks. Archaeologists also found a turtle shell, freshwater mussel shells from three species, various land snails, and bird remains. Interestingly, except for the bird talons, no non-mammalian bones or shells show evidence of human manipulation. In fact, eagle talons are uncommon at other Neanderthal sites, and no site has produced eight talons from white-tailed eagles or any other raptor. Because three or four different eagles are represented by the necklace, they must have been acquired in separate events and preserved as a group before being lost in the sediment. Others have suggested that raptor bones discovered in late Pleistocene sites indicate some form of symbolic activity. Cut marks on the pedal phalanx and talons at Crapina are unrelated to feather removal or subsistence, implying that tendons were severed to acquire the talons. Smoothing of the cut marks, polishing sheen and nicks on some specimens all provide additional evidence for their combination in jewellery. All these marks are likely results of the bones being separated from the foot and the talons being attached to a string or sinew. The cut marks demonstrate the various methods the Neanderthals used to sever bones and mount them into jewellery, according to the report. The Neanderthals' practice of catching eagles was likely planned and ceremonial, similar to ethno-historic societies today. We don't know how they were caught, but if they were collected from carcasses, it must have taken keen eyes to spot the dead birds, which were as rare in the prehistoric avifauna. Researchers believe that collecting talons from at least three different white-tailed eagles reduces the likelihood of recovering carcasses in the field and instead represents evidence of live capture. In any case, these talons provide a wealth of new evidence for Neanderthal abilities and cultural sophistication. They are the first evidence of jewellery in the European fossil record, demonstrating that Neanderthals had a symbolic culture long before modern human forms arrived in Europe. Nonetheless, not everybody is convinced by this study. Critics argue that Neanderthals learned advanced behaviours or acquired advanced tools and ornamentation from modern humans rather than developing them on their own. The Neanderthals' caveman reputation dates back to the mid-1800s, when British geologist William King wrote about the skull of the first Neanderthal fossil from Germany. The thoughts and desires which once dwelt within it never soared beyond those of the brute, he wrote. This view of Neanderthals gained popularity in the early 1900s. 
when French anatomist Marcelin Boulet reconstructed a Neanderthal skeleton from the site of La Chapelle aux Saint in France as a stooped, ape-like creature, one he saw as primitive in both body and mind. In fact, paleoanthropologists have long debated the inferiority of the Neanderthals compared to modern humans in terms of anatomy and behavior. While the exact history behind the Neanderthal necklace may forever remain a mystery, the discovery at Krapina opened a window into the complex and nuanced world of our ancient relatives. The white-tailed eagle claw necklace has become a tangible link connecting us to the lives, beliefs and symbolic expressions of Neanderthals, reminding us that the echoes of their existence still resonate across the epochs, waiting to be uncovered by those who venture into the depths of time. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. And please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos.